G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, today I'm going to do a video for the newbies. And it's a, surprisingly, it's a subject that doesn't seem to have been dealt with on YouTube. And um, it's pretty simple. And we're basically going to show how you match drills, drill size, to tap size. Okay? Pretty simple, really. Uh, I mean, you can get up. Um, tap thread chart off the internet or anywhere they're, they're all around the place and they are uh, technically correct that the uh, for the given size tap thread uh, they'll list the drill that you should be using to drill the hole to put the to cut the tap you know thread into technically they're 100 percent correct but they're not actually always going to be um, as good as you hope for when you do the job because there are a number of variables in cutting threads. For a start, how do you know the tap is actually accurate? How do you know the thread, the bolt that you're going to put in there is not undersized or oversized? How do you know that your drill, how do you know that your drill is really the size, the nominal size that they say it is. Just for an experiment, you want to get your little micrometer, you want to get your packet of drills that you just bought down the local shop, and you want to go through and check the size listed against the size of the drill. I can pretty much guarantee that they won't match. Most of the drills will be undersized, some will be correct, they'll be at the nominal size, but overall there's variation in all of this stuff. If the drill's bent, I mean some drills are more bent than their owners, um, you're going to drill a bigger hole. If the flutes are not correctly cut, evenly cut, uniform, you're going to cut a, a bigger hole. That's probably why they do make them slightly undersized most of the time, but it is surprising when you run the micrometer over drill sets how even between, say, two different lots of drills, you'll find that the, the 3.2 in this set is, is, when you measure it with a micrometer, is actually different size to the 3.2 in that set. And then, of course, if you've got a million drills, now most of the small stuff's unmarked. So what I'm, what I'm getting into saying is you don't know necessarily whether it's a quality drill bit, but it's straight. So at the end of the day, even the wall, the, the, tap, the thread tapping, uh, drill matching chart is technically correct. The hole you drill may not be suitable. Okay, not to put a, a, a too fine a point on it, generally a thread um, chart is, is totally okay. Another way you can um, size um, your tap as far as the drill goes is if you, particularly with metric, but with any of them, uh, if you've got, say, a, uh, a four mil tap, and it's, uh, well, that's not four mil, obviously, but if you had a four mil tap and it was 0.7, say, pitch, you would take the pitch from four mil, and that would give you the size of the hole that you would drill, which is 3.3. Uh, 3.3 millimetres should be the correct hole for a four mil tap off the top of my head. <laughs> I think that's right. Okay, but that's how it works. Pitch from uh, tap size gives you the correct size drill to uh, use. You don't need any fancy charts or anything. Okay, all very, all well and good. But there is another way to do it, and it's the way my father showed me how to size these drills. He was in the army all his life, all of his, through World War II, and then he was a mechanic all his life, and they had to do it the hard way. They didn't have, they couldn't say, oh, Henry, you know, get me the uh, thread chart out the Mac, will you? And uh, Henry would probably say, what the fuck are you talking about? What's a thread chart? Because, nah, these guys had to do it without any of that fancy stuff. And uh, the way that my, my father showed me to do this is very, very simple, and I'll show you how it works. So, uh, this is a trick that uh, he showed me. The simple way to do it is you get your tap, you hold it so that the one 
of the cutting edges is vertical. You get your, your drill that you think is close, you lay it on that vertical edge, you hold it up to the light so that you can see whether or not the drill is blocking out the cutting, the cutting flutes. If it's not, the drill is too small. So you go to your next size up, do the same thing, lay your drill on that raised edge and see if you, if you can see all of the cutting flute. Ideally you should be able to see nearly all of it, but not quite. It should just block off a little bit of the bottom V. And that's the drill you use if that's the case. If it's blocking out all of the cutters, or a lot of the cutters, but it's too big. So that's a simple process, nothing to it. it. You always put the drill on that raised flute. You never put it in the, in the, in the, uh, the gully, even though it looks very handy to rest it in there. That will give you an incorrect reading because uh, you're not showing the full cutting width in that position. That's it. Now, I mean, also, there's another thing to uh, think about this, that even though the thread charts give you the correct size, if you're drilling and tapping into different metals, quite often you want the thread to be maybe a bit tighter in, in one than the other. So, say, cast iron, for instance, I always like to cut... Uh, the threads as tight as possible in cast iron because it's, it's fairly soft stuff. You want maximum penetration. You don't want any any slot. So I'd always try and make the uh, the thread as tight as possible. The tap in this size is 10 by 1.25 millimeter. So if we take the 1.25 millimeter pitch from the 10, we get a nominal drill size of 8.75 millimeters. So we look at our metric drill set, and we've got. 8.5, which when mic'd up is actually 8.48, so that's too small. The next size up is 9, which when mic'd up is actually 8.95, which is too big. We want 8.75. It would do the job, but you'd have a sloppy, a sloppy thread. So in this case, we once again, we're using our micrometer to check our drills. I now go to the imperial size, and I find that 1132nd, when I mic it up, is 8.70. So we want, we want 8.75, so 8.70 is pretty much okay. I think that would do the job. And when you drill a hole, it will probably run slightly, slightly larger. So that's the one I would use. When I match it against the, the tap, it's pretty well perfect. I can see all of the flutes, but only just. So it's pretty much spot on. So, you know, if you can see, get it so that you're right on that bottom edge of those of those cutter gullies, flutes, that's where you want it. Remember, you can always drill more metal out. If it's too small, you just have to find that next size up. Once again, use your micrometer on all the drills you've got. Um, you can't put metal back once you drill it out very easily. So, yeah work your way through it. So always start off undersized if you, if you want to you know, play safe. When you tap, if the tap feels a bit sticky or it makes ticking noise, you know, and there's any twist in it, well, you obviously you have to uh, back out, drill it, drill it out the next size and, and try again, isn't it? No harm done and you'll get there eventually. It's certainly a lot better to get, work your way up than start off and, and oh shit, the hole's too sloppy, look, the, the bolt's all floppy. Yeah work your way up. Okay, well that's it from me. I hope you found it interesting. Simple subject, but you know, a few things to consider. So, okay, until next time, see ya.